Okay, so I wanted to get a really good idea of what the gears were like in the uh, in the CEM60 here. So I took the uh, declination plate off, the cover plate off, and uh, I'll have some uh, just still shots of that uh, probably at the end of the video to, to show you because you actually have to turn it sideways to get to some of the little screws. So here's the knob right here. If you uh, turn it counterclockwise or to the left, it, uh, it is engaged. And uh, if you can see in there, the uh, gears, the, the worm gear here is uh, fully engaged with the uh, ring gear right here. So Ioptron's uh, instructions say you, you turn it to where it's fully engaged and then back off about a quarter turn. And uh, once you do that, it'll allow it to, uh, to move freely. without binding or anything like that. And it sounds pretty smooth. So the way that uh, you would then disengage this gear is uh, you turn it clockwise. And uh, if you'll notice, okay, the blue tape here indicates, uh, it's just so we can kind of see how many times I'm turning it. This is fully engaged. This is backed off about a quarter turn. If I turn it all the way around one time, you don't see any movement yet in here, in the in the gap. If I turn it about another quarter to a third of a turn here, right about there, it starts to open up. I'm gonna close it again just to see if you can see that. It just barely starts to open up, but there's still really no discernible play in there. So if you go about another third of a turn or so, you can tell that the gears are just starting to separate because there's a little bit of play in the gears. So that would be one full turn from where we started to, well, we almost started to notice the, uh, the difference. And now there's quite a discernible bit of play in the gears. And if I go right there, now that's fully disengaged. So now this will free spin. They're completely disengaged. So if I come back, just that quarter turn or so, they start to engage. One thing I noticed too that uh, this actually will, if you push it kind of down toward the ground, you know, being almost fully disengaged, it'll actually pull that off the gear a, a little bit more. So I noticed a little bit of tightness when I turned it to the right about there, um, you know, which is kind of finger tight, it was still slightly engaged and I didn't really like that. Um, so I kind of wanted to open it up and see what was going on, if there was a, an issue or anything. So I really had to put kind of uh, quite a bit of force on it in order to get it fully disengaged, which means then I had to put quite a bit of force to re-engage it, like that. So what I've kind of found is if you go to where it's about finger tight and then push it down toward the ground, it'll pull it off the, the ring gear completely, and then you can kind of finish it out a little bit easier. Um, I don't know if that's intended to be like that. It doesn't seem like it would be, but it's just a little bit of a, a trick that I learned. So anyway, and then you go all the way back around. That is fully engaged, back off, and it's not going anywhere. Okay, something I just did that I thought I would try is I just added a little uh, plastic washer right down in there. So this is fully engaged. Um, so if I thumb tighten it or just finger tighten it right there. Remember about one full turn and it didn't do anything up here. And then that next kind of quarter to a third turn. Now it just started moving. And that was one full turn right there. And if you remember, the blue mark had to come all the way around to about uh, oh, another quarter to a third turn before it would fully disengage the gears. So I think by adding the plastic washer or spacer right there, it allows it to push sooner. And now it actually almost touches those little hard stops, which it didn't do before. So I think that'll help. So now I, I don't, I, I just barely have to, to put it on the right edge or, or fully clockwise. And then I know for a fact that these are disengaged. So this last little bit is just the mount. I used the uh, controller to say go to home. So that's what it's doing now.
and then the uh, removal of the, the plate so you can get to all of this stuff. You just remove those four large hex bolts. You don't have to worry about that little tiny one up at the top. There's a little bit of play in here. So uh, once you've set your zero position or have it find the zero position, if you think it's off by a half a tooth, which I've kind of seen that a couple of times in the forums, you can actually loosen those four hex bolts just a tiny bit, um, move the plate to right where you want it, and then tighten those hex bolts down again. Uh, for the next step, you'll want to rotate the mount head 90 degrees so you can get the screwdriver up under. Uh, but first off, you remove those two uh, little tiny screws facing you. Remove that black plate. Remove the four, one, four screws below. Remove that black plate. And uh, then that uh, circuit board will drop down. There are a couple of little connectors and then a couple of little tiny uh, Phillips head screws for the 12 volt power. Uh, the connectors wiggle off pretty easily. The, uh, the one that's the toughest is right up there behind the two USB ports. It's just kind of hard to get your fingers in there. So if you have a little tool, that would probably be optimal. But then once the, uh, those are free, the uh, circuit board will come out. You can just feed those wires right back up through the declination plate and then uh, pull the declination plate right off. And then that just exposes the last, uh, the last part, the cover. So you remove the four uh, screws that are kind of facing you. And then there's one tiny one on the top. Those are very easy. And then that uh, cover plate just comes off. And then you're done.